Welcome to another video dedicated to the RAF contributions in the Gulf War. I shall cover the role that was played by the Tornado F3 in RAF service during Operation Granby. So, let's begin by explaining the role of the Panavia Tornado F3. Developed as an air defence variant, or ADV for short, the prototype for the Tornado F2 first flew on the 27th of October 1979. After a few years of trials, the F2 was finally brought into RAF service on the 5th of November 1984. After a few years, the F2's short service life came to an end, being taken out of service and being replaced by the Tornado F3 in 1989. The F3 had many differences over the F2, most notably a new pair of Rolls-Royce RB199 Mark 104 engines, which were both longer and had a greater performance at high altitude than the original RB199 Mark 103 engines, which were also seen on the Tornado GR1. The F3's primary armament was the Skyflash, a British medium-range semi-active radar homing air-to-air -air missile, with its design influenced by the American AIM-7E2 Sparrow. The F3 could also carry AIM-9s, with the Gulf War Tornado F3s using either AIM-9Ls or Ms, and also using the FIMAT Chaff Dispenser, as well as the 1,500 litre or 2,250 litre fuel tanks. Like the American F-14 Tomcat, the Tornado F3 had an automatic wing sweep function, allowing for automatic alteration of the wings, most suited for the current situation and the wings could be swept between 25 degrees, swept forward, or 67 degrees, fully swept back. Enough of the details, let's move on to the Gulf. A total of 18 Tornado F3s were deployed over to the Gulf. Iraq invaded Kuwait on the 2nd of August 1990, and within 9 days, number 5 Composite Squadron's 12 Tornado F3s reached the Gulf. With a further 6 arriving later on in the Gulf, the F3 played a vital role flying cap sorties and protecting high-value C2 platforms such as the E3. Now, let's go into a little more detail. On the 9th of August 1990, the Secretary of State of Defence announced that 12 Tornado F3s and 12 Jaguar GR1s were to be deployed to the Gulf. It was a coincidence that No. 5 and 29 squadrons based at Coningsby were on an armament practice camp at RAF Akrotori in Cyprus, and just had to make a shorter hop to Dharan. On the 29th of August, these two squadrons, No. 5 and 29, formed up to create No. 5 Composite Squadron. Although these tornadoes were on training at an armament practice camp, they were not configured for war. In the September of 1990, this squadron was renamed to No. 11 Composite Squadron. With the F3s getting to the Gulf with relative haste, the ground crews, along with additional equipment, were ferried out to the Gulf via RF Tristars and Hercules. The Tornado F3s were used in a rearward CAPS role. CAPS stood for Combat Air Patrol. The Tornado F3s lacked defensive countermeasures and modern IFF, identification friend from foe, and it was found that aircraft such as the F-15C would be much more effective and efficient in a forward caps role, with access to modern IFF to prevent any friendly fire incidents. This was an extremely large risk as there were masses of different aircraft within the coalition, and therefore identifying friendlies was an extremely high priority. This led to the F3s being placed further back, protecting C2 platforms such as AWACS aircraft, like the E3 Sentry. Although this role may seem to be out of the action and less thrilling than the roles played by the F-15Cs, without the F3s the coalition would have been outstretched, and the overall structure would have been so much more weaker, so the F3 filled a vital role into the success and suppression of Saddam Hussein's assault on Kuwait. This is one of the main reasons that the Tornado F3 had no air-to-air -air kills, and only on one occasion came close to combat, but no engagements. The F3 was made from a frame of a fighter bomber, and made into an interceptor so it clearly wasn't the ideal dogfighter. The original F3s were not modified when they left RF Akrotori in Cyprus, and therefore were not ready for the harsh climate of the Gulf. Modifications were introduced, such as environmental improvements to weapon systems, radar, defensive countermeasures, however still lacked modern IFF. The radar used on the F3 was the AI-24, however was also one of the reasons why the F3 was not put into a forward caps position. The Stage 1 versions of the AI-24 met basic RF requirements. These were then superseded by the much more improved Stage 2. However, the modification wasn't ready for the F3s in the Gulf, therefore the Stage 1 Plus radar was introduced. It incorporated some of the Stage 2 qualities into the original Stage 1 radar, but did not include the vital NCTR, non-cooperative target recognition mode, and needed the Stage 2 to be fitted in. The lack of NCTR was another lacking quality along with the IFF, which placed the Tornado F3 in a role further back in the front line during the Gulf War. 
On the 14th of September, six more F3s were sent out to the Gulf from the Leeming Wing, accompanied by a squadron of GR1s. More than 2,000 combat air patrols were flown by RF Tornado F3s from August to March 1990 to 1991. Originally, the crews from the Tornadoes wanted chaff, but they never got it. However, within the first two weeks of the Gulf War, the f were gifted with the much-awaited FIMAT chaff dispensers. In the September of 1990, Number 5 Composite Squadron was replaced by Number 11 Composite Squadron. Combat air patrols were then flown until Christmas. After Christmas, 23 Squadron, based at Lucas, took over operations from the Leeming Wing. When the tornadoes weren't flying in cap sorties, they would be training with two other groups with light of ordnance. The first was the US Marine Corps with their F-18Cs, the second was the RF with their Jaguar and Tornado GR1s. Major maintenance of the Tornado F3s couldn't be done anywhere other than in the UK, so aircraft flew in a sort of rotor, flying to and from Dharan to the UK and vice versa. On the 28th of February 1991, at 0500 hours, the ceasefire was announced. The vast majority of F3s left the Gulf, however a small squadron of F3s remained in Iraq, patrolling the Iraqi no-fly zones. A no-fly zone, or air exclusion zone, is a section of airspace where some aircraft are not permitted to fly, in this case, aircraft from the Iraqi Air Force. From 1993 to 1995, some Tornado F3s acted as escorts in Operation Deny Flight over Bosnia. With the Leeming Wing's last Tornado F3s coming to an end in 2012, the Tornado F3s proved their worth in combat during the Gulf War. Although not an air superiority fighter, the F3 showed that it could adapt to fill the role and fill the gaps within the coalition air superiority during the duration of the war. Now, a bit about the future and what it has in store for this channel. Firstly, I would just like to thank everyone for helping the Buccaneer video get to 40,000 views. I can't believe that, but the video doesn't deserve it. I never intended it to get much, that much attention, so the video's factual quality is certainly not as high as it should have been. This video hopefully has improved. I hope to move on to the American side of the Gulf, covering the A6s, F14s, F15s, Apaches and many more. I hope to come back to the RAF soon, going over the Tornado GR1s, Chinooks and many more. However, that is all for this video about the Tornado F3. Thank you very much for watching, please remember to subscribe and like, and as always, stay safe in these difficult times.